Salikum. Um, we are going to start the program with the Quran recitation by Kadir Tareen. Assalamu alaikum. Is Surat Al An'am, Ayah 83 to Ayah 90. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وتلك حجتنا آتيناها إبراهيم على قومه نرفع درجات من نشاء إن ربك حكيم عليم ووهبنا له إسحاق ويعقوب كلا هدينا ونوحا هدينا من قبل ومن ذريته داود وسليمان وأيوب ويوسف وموسى وهارون وكذلك نجز المحسنين وزكريا ويحيى وعيسى وإلياس كل من الصالحين وإسماعيل واليسع ويونس ولوطا وكلا فضلنا على العالمين ومن آبائهم وذرياتهم وإخوانهم واجتبيناهم وهديناهم إلى صراط مستقيم ذلك هدى الله يهدي به من يشاء من عباده ولو أشركوا لحبط عنهم ما كانوا يعملون أولئك الذين آتيناهم الكتاب والحكم والنبوة فإن يكفر بها هؤلاء فقد وكلنا بها قوما ليسوا بها بكافرين أولئك الذين هدى الله فبهداه مقتده قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إن هو إلا ذكرى للعالمين صدق الله العظيم Translation is the following And that was our reason that we gave to Ibrahim to use over his people We raise the grades of whom we will Surely your Lord is wise and knowledgeable and we granted Ishaq and Ya'qub for him. We guided all. And from before we guided Nuh. And from his offsprings we guided Dawood and Sulaiman and Ayyub and Yusuf and Musa and Harud. And likewise we reward those who do good. And Zakaria and Yahya and Isa and Ilyas. All were from those who correct themselves. And Ismail, and Al Yasa, and Yunus, and Luta, and all we favored over the worlds, and from their fathers, ancestors, and their offspring, and their brethren, and we selected them, and we guided them towards the straight path. That is the guidance of Allah. He guides with it whom he wills from his servants. And if they associated, definitely it would have failed them whatever they were doing. They are those to whom we gave Al-Kitab, the book, 
Al-Hukum, the governance, and al nubuwa the prophecy. So if they reject with it, so without doubt we will advocate with it to people who will not be rejecters with it. They are those whom Allah guided. So imitate their guidance. Say, I do not question you of a reward over it. It is not except a remembrance for the worlds. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Zaina Baloch, and I will be your moderator slash host today. Um, so first off, how's everyone doing? God, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you all for being here today. Um, this is a historical symposium, but it's a historical event because you have two international scholars here, one from Pakistan, one from America, coming to talk about the most exciting book in history, the Quran. So um, a little bit about me, I'm the co-founder of YAP, or Young Americans Protest, and I'm, we're currently working on building an app for Generation Z to be able to have things like this, like critical discourses, and really focusing on the critical education of the future generations um, and then another just to kind of set these set some uh so not Islam, Muslims in general, we really don't have a place where we can have uh, critical discourse and really have a place where we can like think differently, we can ask questions and we can learn. So this is a place for learning and we want to make sure that we're respectful of both uh, speakers and people that are here, and, but also that we have Mam Zid Shakur. Uh, he is the co-founder and senior faculty member of Zaytuna College, which is located in Berkeley, California. He's amongst the most respected and influential Islamic scholars in the West. Um, so Imam Zaid Shakur, he's a uh, Born in Berkeley, California, and he accepted Islam in 1977 while serving in the United States Air Force. He obtained a BA with honors in international relations at American University in Washington, D.C., and then earned his master's in political science at Rutgers University, right down the street. Um, and so and while he was at Rutgers, he led a successful campaign f for divestment from South Africa and co-founded New Brunswick Islamic Center, formerly Masjid al Huda. After a year of studying Arabic in Cairo, Egypt, he settled in New Haven, Connecticut, and continued his community activism co-founding Masjid al-Islam, the Tri-State Muslim Education Initiative, and the Connecticut Muslim Coordinating Committee. As Imam of Masjid al-Islam, from 1988 to 1994, he spearheaded a community renewal and grassroots anti-drug effort and also taught political science in Arabic at Southern Connecticut State University. He served as an interfaith council chaplain at Yale University and developed the chaplaincy sensitivity training for physicians at Yale New Haven Hospital. He then left for Syria to pursue his studies in the traditional Islamic sciences. And he currently is at Zaytuna College, which is located at Berkeley, California. Um, so with further ado, thank you, Ma'am Zaid Shakur. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salat wa salam, ala Sayyidi al-Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhik, wa li azimi sultanik, subhanaka la nahsi thanaan alayka anta kama thnayta ala nafsik, اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وكرة عيوننا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله. It's a great honor to be here uh, in Princeton, and it's really uh, I have to thank the organizers, particularly Sister Rubina. Well, a few days ago, I was in Houston, Texas for a wedding this weekend. I, I was planning to fly back tomorrow mon morning, but Sister Rubina contacted my wife, and my wife hastily arranged to change my flight from Monday to Sunday, and because of that, I was able to attend the janazah today after Dhuhr 
of a very, very dear person to myself, to Sheikh Shibli and everyone in this central Jersey and northern New Jersey area, Dr. Sarah Katovich. May Allah have mercy on her and give her the highest stations and rewards in paradise. Uh, I was instructed uh, to speak on a topic of Moses and Jesus in the Quran, something, yeah, the book of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was given no further instructions. And so what I decided to do, I'm just trying to set my phone so it won't cut off. Allahumma salli'a. So phone never cut off. Uh, was to look at uh, these scriptures not in any sort of comparative legal sense, not in any sort of comparative uh, uh, historical sense, but in a comparative moral sense. Because as we all know, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that surely I was sent to perfect good character. And if we look at our Muslim community globally, I think we would not have much dispute if we were to say that we are suffering, generally speaking, not implicating anyone in this room, from a moral and ethical crisis. I was, I said in Houston, I met with a young lady who was wooed by a gentleman and he was Prince Charming. He was Dr. Jekyll. And as soon as they got married, she was a very prominent doctor, independently wealthy, he proceeded to destroy her life, to take all of her money, to abuse her psychologically, physically, and every way you could abuse a human being. And this gentleman claimed he was a Muslim. That's a moral and ethical failure, not a legal failure. He played, prayed, he fasted, he adhered to the legal parameters of the religion in the context of his life. but. He had no deeper understanding of the religion. And I can I've spend the, much of the last two decades in the San Francisco Bay Area. 80% of the liquor stores in Oakland are controlled by Muslims, primarily of Yemeni descent. But it could be Chicago, it could be the Egyptians, in South Side Chicago, it could be the Palestinians in Detroit. And they will pray Fajr and never miss being in the first line at Fajr, make the salam and then run to open up the liquor store to destroy lives and communities. That's a moral and ethical failure. So what I want to do, when we speak of Moses and Jesus, I want to look at the most prominent saying associated to Moses, the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments, and to see how those are reflected in the Quran. And then the most prominent saying associated with Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount, and again to see how those teachings are reflected in the Quran. And if I'm somehow deviating from the intention of the organizers, you should have given me better instructions. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So Jesus, or Moses, according to the King James Version, and we'll skip the introduction, introductory remarks, he says that thou shall have no other gods before me. So this is at the heart of what will become Judaic monotheism. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهِ 
لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري that verily and uh, native Arab speakers understand how powerful this is they say إِنَّنِي there, there are two points of emphasis here إِنَّ which is for emphasis and repeating the noon so we can say in Arabic إِنِّي but in this verse, Allah Ta'ala says, Innani and Allah. And then the pronoun is mentioned. The pronoun is mentioned, Inni. The Ya is the pronoun. But then the pronoun is repeated for further emphasis. Innani and Allah. So, Innani, Allah. Innani and Allah. So, in English, it would be very awkward to translate because it would translate something like verily, surely, most definitely I am Allah la ilaha illa ana there is no God save I, save me fa'abudni worship me wa'aqim as-salati li dhikri and establish the prayer for my remembrance and this message is a definitive message in Quran, the message of Tawheed. The message of uh, Tawheed. And then the commandments go on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in, in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the sea. So no graven image. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us that it is impossible to make any graven image of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah ta'ala informs us, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ basir. There is nothing like unto Allah. There's nothing that can be compared to Allah. There's nothing whose likeness is like Allah. There's nothing like Allah. Nothing comparable to Allah. As one of our great scholars mentioned, كُلُّ مَا قَطَرْ عَلَى بَالِكِ فَاللَّهُ خِلَافُ ذَلِكِ Anything that your mind might conceptualize concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is in opposition to that. Your mind will never encompass the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كُلُّ مَا قَطَرَ عَلَى بَالِكِ فَاللَّهُ خِلَافُ ذَلِكِ Allah is in opposition to anything your mind might conceive of. Allah Ta'ala then tells us that there is a continuity of monotheism throughout the Abrahamic traditions that were articulated through Moses and the book of Moses, which we are referencing now, and the book of Jesus, and of course the Qur'an, the Gospels of Jesus and the Qur'an. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, your God is one God as Jesus informed the children of Israel. And so Allah Ta'ala, He informs us, لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ That we have sent to every nation. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ Every single nation, Rasula, a messenger instructing them, أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ that you worship Allah and you turn away from the false god. Anything that will be set up for worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it goes on and mentioning and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That there is a relationship between love and obedience. No one can claim the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disobey Allah. 
as Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah is related to have said Tasi Tasi al-ilaha wa anta tudhiru hubbahu hadha hadha muhalun fil qiyasi badi'u that you claim you rebel against Almighty God yet you manifest superficially and outwardly his love that's impossible that goes against all the rule all the rules law kana hubbuka sadiqan la ta'tahu inna al muhibb li man yuhibbu muti'u if your love was sincere or truthful you would have you would have obeyed him verily the lover obeys their beloved and so when the Musa alayhi salam is recorded to have said that and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment this is a general principle that love cannot be separated from obedience inna al-muhibba liman yuhibbu muti'a and Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran wa min al-nasi مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ That amongst the people there are those who set up likenesses which they love as they should love Allah. Those, uh, those who believe are more intense in their love for Allah. More intense in their love for their law. They say there's something here that's uh, deleted or uh, unmentioned. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ مِنْ حُبِّهِمْ لِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ They're more intense in their love of Allah than their love for anything other than Allah. Than their love for anything other than Allah. So you can see this continuity of teachings. And he continues that thou should not take the Lord of thy name, God, in vain. For the Lord will not, will not hold him guiltless who taketh his name in vain. And we're told in the Quran that the, the name of Allah is blessed. Tabarak asmu rabbika dhil jalali wal ikram. Blessed is the name of your Lord, the possessor of majesty and nobility. Dil Jalali wal Ikram. The name of Allah is blessed. And one of the ways that it is blessed is that no one claims it. Do any of you know anyone named Allah? All of the millions and billions of people, no one is named Allah. Because Allah's name is blessed. And unlike God, we have the Greek gods. It's plural. We have the goddess of love, which has been applied to many undeserving claimants. Allah has only been applied to the Lord of all the worlds, the creator of all that exists. The first, the last, the open, the, the open, the hidden. La ilaha illallah. Sayyiduna Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Wa wasayna al-insana bi walidayhi hamalathu ummuhu wahnan ala wahn. وفي صاله في عامين نشكر لي ولوالديك إلي المصير. And your Lord has counseled human the human. وصين الإنسان. Your Lord has counseled the insan بوالديه إحسانا. Good treatment of his parents. His mother bore him and. Pain, difficulty upon difficulty, compounded 
difficulties and his weaning is after two years and after that nine months of bearing that child and then sacrificing two years to breastfeed and to nurse that child Allah Ta'ala instructs us anishku li that you give thanks to me wudi walidayk and to your parents one of the great tragedies of our time that we see unfolding in this country and I can only speak for this country because this is the land I live in as our society moves further and further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Almighty God in any true sense of the word the treatment of the parents becomes increasingly atrocious at a time when the country was closer to God some of you are old enough to remember the shows that we grew up with Leave it to Beaver who remembers Leave it to Beaver right unfortunately there were no, there were no black folks or brown folks but that's another issue but the relationships between the parents and the children exemplified manners dignifying the parents respecting the parents so when Wally came and he wanted Eddie to come and play with him good morning Mrs. Cleaver how are you today or oh, Eddie coming to get Wally can Wally come out to play with me Miss Cleaver please the same with uh, my three sons Hazel the maid and we went from Lever to Beaver to Beavis and Butthead to Bart Simpson and Spongebob to total de degeneracy total disrespect of in not just parents any authority figure and when that happens in a society and we're told that hierarchies are meaningless as some moronic college had everyone wearing the same gowns because if the possessor of the PhD wore the robe with the stripes indicating the PhD and the one with the master degree had a robe that distinguished them from the undergraduates it would be a form of oppression and so the the faculty not wanting to be oppressive donned the same robes as the undergraduates and what is the deeper message in that some people might say good no it's not good because when you undermine the authority in society based on hierarchical relationships you undermine the family you not only undermine the family you undermine the foundation to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the proper worship of Allah is predicated on scholars who are the heirs of the prophets instructing people as to their proper the proper practice of the religion instructing people as to the foundational ethics and morality of the religion and so we say they're just like me what gives them the right to tell me anything well for one thing they dedicated 30 years of their life to studying the religion that should count for something for another thing, in many instances, they sacrifice their health sitting in caves or living on a, a, a starvation diet during their stu student years, getting very little sleep. That should count for something, but no, it counts for nothing. And so we get into this equalizing of everything. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. Someone might say, oh, there's no hierarchy in Islam. Are they equal, those who know and those who know not? Don't murder the soul. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and there are many verses in the Quran but I think it's very important to consider those verses in the light 
of one prophetic hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, لا تقتل نفس ظلما إلا كان على ابن آدم على على ابن آدم الأول كفل من دمها لأنه كان أول من سن القتل. That no one is mur no soul is killed unjustly, except that a portion of that the stain of that blood falls upon the first child of Adam because he was the one who introduced murder into the human family. So every murderer will have the first child of Adam, Kabul, will have a share of that crime because he innovated murder amongst humanity. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't come close to adultery. Don't approach adultery. It is an abomination, it is a moral abomination. Fahisha. And what a wretched path. What a wretched path to follow. And uh, the subsequent uh, commandment mentions don't commit adultery with your neighbor's wife. Don't, or rather, don't covet your neighbor's possessions, your neighbor's wife, etc. It's a kabira, a major sin to commit adultery. It's in a graver sin to commit adultery with the neighbor's wife. So again, there's a continuity of moral teachings. There's a continuity of tawheed. Every nation received the messenger instructing it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to avoid, turn away from the false god. Thou shalt not steal. When the Prophet, the covenant was taken from the women. One of the things that's emphasized, and this is general, in this context specific for the women. Ya ayyuhal nabi, idha jaaka al-mu'minatu yubayyi'anaka ala alla yushrikna billah wa la yasriqna wa la yaznoon wa la yaqtuna awladuhun. To the end of the verse. O oh, Prophet, ayyuhal nabi, when the women come to take the oath of allegiance to you, yubayyi'anaka, what should they take the oath upon? That they will join nothing as partners with Allah. Tawheed, monotheism, the first few commandments focusing on that. Wala yasriqna, and they will not steal. They will not steal. Wala yaznun, wala yaznin, and they will not commit adultery. Another commandment. Wala yaqtulna awladahum, and they will not murder their children. So several of the commandments are mentioned in this one verse alone. As we said in the verse, it's specific for the women, but it's general. For the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Theft is one of those crimes that is so severe that the Prophet mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يسرقنا لا يسرق السارقو the thief does not steal at the time that he steals and remains a believer, while remaining a believer. That's the gravitude. This is an action that negates the faith during the time of his commission. May Allah Ta'ala spare all of us. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, or his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Don't desire a covet, those things that Allah has favored some of you over others. Rather, we should be appreciative and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gifts he's bestowed upon our neighbors, upon other than ourselves. We live in a time that encourages us to be envious, that encourages us 
to want to take unjustly, to usurp the wealth, the status, the standing of others. If they disagree with us, we'll cancel them. If we have an opportunity, we'll usurp their wealth. And we'll, we'll give it a fancy sounding name, like wealth redistribution. Well, it's just plain theft. One of the great maqasid of our religion, the overarching objectives of our religion, is the protection of private property. Maqasid al-Shari'ah, Hifdul Deen, protecting religion itself. And this is number one. Why? Without religion, life isn't worth living. Without religion, we don't know how to truly be, be human. It's religion that confers upon us our humanity. Hifdul Hayat, protecting life. Hifdul Aql, so murder is forbidden. Weapons of mass destruction are forbidden in Islam because they've indiscriminately killed. But our enemies have them. Our enemies have a lot of things. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysir, make things easy for us. Hifl al-aql, protecting the intellect. Because this is what makes us, again, this is a distinguishing human characteristic. There are those that say, we evolved from an ape. I would say there's not a, an evolutionary difference between us and the apes. There's a revolutionary difference. Evolution is slow, barely distinguishable as it unfolds. Every single ape you can mention, spider monkey, rhesus monkey, baboon, Gorilla, chimpanzee, you name it. If it's an ape, orangutan, if it's an ape, the only tool it can use is a stick to dig the meat out of the nut. Every single one, they all use the same tool. The human being, because of this intellect Allah has bestowed upon us, we're making nano instruments that you can't even detect with the naked eye. There was a gentleman, uh, when I was in California, KGO is a very big radio station. They were having a discussion on the distinction of human beings vis-a-vis -vis apes. And uh, a guy called in, he's listening in his car. He calls in and he says, and the, the gentleman on the show in the studio is arguing that we're distinct. And the guy calls in and says, well, I'm just a monkey. And the guy, the gentleman who was having the discussion with the moderator, he said, you might think you're a monkey, but I never saw a monkey driving down the highway 65 miles an hour in an automobile talking on a cell phone via an invisible signal that's bouncing off a satellite in geocentric Earth orbit. I never saw a monkey who could do that. <laughs> May Allah give us tawfiq and taysiyah. So we move to the Sermon of the Mount. So that's Moses. And that's the book of Moses. And that's his ethical heart. So we move to the ethical heart of the Gospels or the New Testament, as we say contemporarily. And seeing the multitudes, he, Jesus, went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Our Prophet وسلم, informed us, يَدْخُلُ الْفُقَرَاءُ الْجَنَّةَ قَبْلَ الْأَغْنِيَاءُ بِيَوْمٍ وَهُوَ خَمْسِينَ وَهُوَ خَمْسِمِيَةِ عَامٍ That the poor people will enter paradise a day, this is a day in the Akhirah, a day before the rich people, and that's 
equivalent to 500 years. The Quran puts a different spin on the poor and those who will have Jannah. So Jesus said, uh, the blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And a key word here, spirit. All of us, whether we're wealthy or moderate means, we should have the spirit of the poor people. The spirit of the poor people, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned if you drop some, a piece of morsel of food on the ground, dust, dust it off and consume it. Clean it off and consume it. Some people might say, that's illogical. Why should we do that? There are germs on the ground. He said because it's our ummah reflects the spirit of the poor. If a rich person drops a morsel of food on the ground, what do they do? They throw it away. If a poor person drops a morsel of ground on the food, they dust it off. Some of them, they don't even drop it on the ground. Someone else throws it in the garbage. They don't dig it out of the garbage. I'm not suggesting that you do that. But what I am suggesting is that we understand the spirit of the poor. On the one hand, and then we understand in a sense, and this is the greatest emphasis that the Quran puts on poverty, we are in desperate need. Poverty is to be a need that we are impoverished before our Lord. Ayyuhannas, ya ayyuhannas, antumul fuqara'u ilallah. Wallahu huwa al-ghani wal hamid. Oh humanity, humankind, ayyuhannas, not just you Muslims. Humankind, you are in desperate need of your Lord. Antumul fuqara'u ilallah. And Allah is free of all needs, worthy of all praise. And so that is the spirit of the people of paradise because the first step in the spiritual path is to recognize your need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one of our, uh, we call them nadimin, uh, the writers of spiritual poetry, poetry, he wrote the following words. أَتَيْنَكَ بِالْفَقْرِ يَا ذَا الْغِنَى وَأَنْتَ الَّذِي لَمْ تَزَالْ مُحْسِنَى That we come to you acknowledging our need for you. That's the first step to acknowledge one's needs for Allah. أَتَيْنَكَ بِالْفَقْرِ يَا ذَا الْغِنَى وَأَنْتَ الَّذِي لَمْ تَزَالْ مُحْسِنَى And you are the one who continues to be good to us. Allah's goodness is continuous. If you live in this country, every time you turn on the tap, water comes out. And it's, it's, it's always clear water. And if it were brown, you complain to someone and they send out the crew and they find the problem and they fix it. The, goods, the goodness is continuous. Unfortunately, our shukr, our, our appreciation sometimes isn't. And he went on to say that blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And Allah Ta'ala tells us, وَنُرِيدُ أَن نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُدْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْأَئَمَّ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ And so Allah is saying to us that's sending us that same message, that we desired to show our graces, to be, bestow our graces upon those who are downtrodden in the, in, the, in the world, in the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. He said, we desire to bestow our blessings. Those who are meek and downtrodden, oppressed in the earth and to make them the leaders, and to make them the heirs. To make them the heirs. And so, we have to humble ourselves. Our Prophet ﷺ humbled himself. 
He had a choice. He could have been a prophet king, Malikun Nabi, or a prophet servant, Abdul Nabi. He chose with the encouragement of Jibreel alayhi salam to be a prophet servant. And he, what were the implications of that? We read and we give lessons on the implications. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he milked his own goat. He mended his own clothes. He repaired his own sandals. And he was in the service of his family. That was an implication that flowed from his being a prophet servant. Had he chosen to be a prophet king, others would have served him. One of the sad realities of our, our day, those who technically should be the heirs of the Prophet. If they're not served, they become very upset. As if they're the grand poobah, sitting on a throne somewhere. This is not the way of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Ta'ala is telling us the ones we want to make the heirs, the one we want to make the leaders, are those who are downtrodden and oppressed and weak. And Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq and taysir, kabul. He went on to say, blessed are those which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And a person will have nothing except what they strive for. Blessed are those who strive, hunger, and thirst after righteousness. Those who strive for righteousness. Those who work the works of the righteous. Those who undertake the deeds of the righteous. Those who sacrifice and miss sleep. Those who get up early to read the Qur'an, to make sure they pray Fajr with the Jama'ah, and then they don't have time to go back to work. Or if it's Ramadan, they don't have time to take a little nap before they go to work. Then they leave the masjid, they go home, they freshen up, they go to work. They commute two hours, they work eight hours, they commute coming back. But they do it because they long for Allah. They long for paradise. And that propels them. And Allah has promised them that their strivings will be rewarded. Blessing, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The purest of hearts, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah informs us that his heart can see. Not in a physical sense, not like the basar, but basira, with the spiritual vision of the heart. And Allah tells him, ma kadab al fu'adu, ma ra'a. The heart has not lied or been deceitful concerning what he saw. The heart has not been de deceitful concerning what he saw. So the heart can see. And the, the vision here, we wouldn't say as some might interpret the biblical verse, that if your heart is pure, it can see Allah. I'm not saying that. But if your heart is pure, it can perceive Allah. And it can understand the reality of Allah. And it can put your soul in touch directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result, you can be elevated spiritually. And this is the foundation of our spiritual practice. This is the foundation of our spiritual practice. May Allah give us tawfiq. When, when uh, the Prophet Sallallahu mentions in the hadith of Jibreel, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ ihsan, Inform me about inner excellence. He said, and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu, that you worship Allah as if you see Him. And so the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts can become so sharp 
that we respond as if we see him. May Allah give us tawfiq and bless us to attain to that station. And then he said, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. So we don't attribute children to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we do attribute great virtue to the peacemakers, the muslihun, those who reform relations after they've been torn apart. Those who bring those together, even the believers, in the mu'minun ikhwa, the aslihu bayna akhawaykum. The believers are none other than brothers and sisters. Sisterhood implied, so join between your contending brothers. Make peace between your contending brothers. We're the people of peace. We're dereliction in our duty. Dereliction in our duty. In the military, there's a crime called dereliction of duty. Dereliction of duty is a shameful failure to fulfill one's obligation. As Muslims, we have an obligation. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You are the best of community raised up to serve humanity. Ta'muruna bin ma'roof. You enjoin what is right. Wa tanhawna anil munkar. And you forbid what is wrong. Wa tu'minuna billah. You believe in Allah. What Malcolm X had a scathing condemnation of the Muslim world. In the, in the face of the slavery, in the face of the racial system of apartheid in this country, Jim Crow, and its perpetuation through the new Jim Crow, mass incarceration. Did one Muslim leader or scholar say a single word to try to change that situation. Tell me. May Allah give us tawfiq. Ta'muruna bin ma'roof. Wa tanhawna an al munkar. You enjoin what is right, you forbid what is wrong. Our religion is a religion of grassroots involvement. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to go back to the poor, said that he wanted to be a prophet's servant. He wanted to live amongst the poor. He wanted to be resurrected amongst the poor. He wanted to serve the poor. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is our desire in that regard? And that doesn't mean everyone just dressed shabby. No, and Allah Jamil Hibbu Jamal. Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. But we have an obligation to this world. And those of us in this country, we have an obligation. And my I let me hasten and I'll I'll make my final remarks. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We'll leave it here. These are my final remarks, my dear brothers and sisters. I want to remind you, so we see this country being torn apart along racial lines. We see the resurgence of white supremacy. We see the mainstreaming of white nationalism. And in response to that, we see movements like critical race theory that flips the script and says, no, white people are inherently racist irredeemably racist. Uh, they're privileged, they need to renounce their privilege as if that's going to bring us together. That's going to create further polarization. I use this example. In Appalachia, here, coal mining country. Some of you are familiar with that, that, that region. A family, the father died at the age of 50 from black lung disease. He was strung out on opioids because from bending over in the coal shafts, his back went out. To find relief from the pain, his doctor prescribed him Oxycontin or some other uh, perks, some opiates. He became addicted. His wife, to drown out her pain, started using them. 
Her pain was not physical. It was psychological trauma. She became addicted. When the father died, the husband died, the prescription stopped, so she had to find the heroin dealer and she became addicted to heroin. The son had two choices when he graduated high school in terms of economic advancement. It was Walmart or the war machine. He chose the war machine, he got killed in Iraq. The daughter has two babies from two different men and she's an alcoholic. What is their reaction going to be when someone comes to them and says, you are the enjoyer, you enjoy white privilege? They're going to push them into the hands of some white nationalist demagogue who comes to them in the face of their pain, and the face of their loss, and tell them white lives matter. Anyway, let me conclude by reminding the Muslims of our obligation in that regard to just end on a practical note. Oh, listen, so I can very quickly indulge me a minute. So this is what the great historian Arnold Toynbee says concerning the race problem and the role of the Muslims. So he says, and this is in his book, Civilization on Trial, that he wrote towards the end of his voluminous study, a study of civilizations. Uh, during that period in the 1940s, he took some time out and he wrote a book called Civilization on Trial. A chapter in that book is entitled Islam, the West, and the Future. And a section in that chapter is entitled Islam and the Race Problem, or Racial Issues, rather. He says, the extinction of race consciousness as between Muslims is one of the outstanding moral achievements of Islam. And in the contemporary world, there is, as it happens, a crying need for the propagation of this Islamic virtue. For although the record of history would seem on the whole to show that race consciousness has been the exception and not the rule in the constant interbreeding of the human species, it is a fatality of the present situation that this consciousness is felt and felt strongly by the very peoples which in the competition of the last four centuries between several Western powers have won at least for the moment the lion's share of the Earth's inheritance, referring to the British and British settler societies such as Canada, United States, Australia. This is where race is most intensely an issue. Although in other respects, the triumph of the English-speaking peoples may be judged in retrospect to have been a blessing to mankind in this perilous matter of race feeling, it can hardly be denied that it has been a misfortune. And then he goes on, but to conclude, as things are now, the exponents of racial intolerance are in the ascendant. And if their attitude towards the race question prevails, it may eventually provoke a general catastrophe. And we see that happening here in this country. Yet the forces of racial toleration, which at the present seem to be fighting a losing battle and a spiritual struggle of immense importance to mankind, might still regain the upper hand if any strong influence mili militating against race consciousness that has heretofore been held in reserve were now to be thrown into the scales. It is conceivable that the spirit of Islam might be the timely reinforcement which would decide this issue in the favor of tolerance and peace. Where are the Muslims? This is the 1940s in the intervening 70 some odd years. What have we done in this country or globally to mitigate against this looming catastrophe that Mr. Toynbee warns of. So let me conclude with the book of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quranul Kareem. When Allah Ta'ala tells us, and this is our point of departure in terms of this issue 
أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير. Oh humanity, we made you from a single pair, a male and female. The races say we all have different parentage. And we made you into nations and tribes that you may recognize in each other the ta'arafu, the creative power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that your tribal differences become the foundation for tearing your societies apart. Inna akramakum inda Allah itqaakum. And the most noble, you, uh, noble of you with Allah is not like shaitan who claims some distinction based on physical characteristics. And shaitan is the first racist and Toymi calls racism a spiritual disease. And khayrun minhu, supremacist. I'm better than him. Why? Khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtuhu min tain. You created me from fire. And the fire has color. It can be blue, ye yellow, orange, white. You've all seen those flames. Wa khalaqtuhu min tain. And you created him from black clay. And that's why I'm better. Every racist is a, a, a dupe of Satan. But Muslims have to bring this to people. Inna Allah alimun khabir. So it's not a physical struggle at the end of the day. It is as Toynbee says, it is a spiritual struggle. May Allah bless us to turn to the book of Allah. To turn to those messages that are most relevant for our time. to begin to address the burning issues of our day. And may Allah bless us to be the children of Abraham Abikum Ibrahim. That the monotheistic foundation of the Abrahamic religions and the shared moral and ethical foundations that we were trying to touch on today are preserved in this world based on our efforts and our struggle and our leadership. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah Ta'ala bless all of you. I probably went over the time. I apologize for that. But this says like from 3 to 9 o'clock, so who cares? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Imam Zishakhar. Um, I think that was a great reminder of how we have the Quran, every single, almost what, Muslims are 2 billion people in the world, almost 20% of the population, and we have the Quran, a living playbook to literally solve all the world's problems, and we are falling and not doing enough or really anything to really bring ourselves into this society and be able to use the Quran and better society. And I think Imam Zid Shaka really hit on the points that could help get rid of things like racism, colonization, the economic and economic uh, distribution that really belongs to 1% of the world right now. So right now, um, just to also, um, so on that, I'm going to take a, a little bit playbook from the Quran and just give a little bit about respect. Um, we do have, you know, scholars here that came here, gave their time. So please try to respect the speakers. So a little intro about um, Muhammad Sheikh. Uh, thank you for being here from Pakistan. So Muhammad Sheikh is from Karachi, Pakistan, and was a student of the renowned Muslim scholar Sheikh Ahmad Didat. Um, he's the president of IPCI from Durban, South Africa. He's a remarkable Muslim scholar with a charismatic personality, unique in presenting the relevant ayahs, signs on a particular topic from the Quran in order to clarify the spirit essence in English and Urdu. Muhammad Sheikh was the only preacher from all over the world to secure runners-up position after top 50 in the book, The 500 Most Influential Muslims, 2010 by the Royal Islamic Strategic Studies Center um, in Amman, Jordan. This followed his earlier acclaim on account of his li lifelong dedication to Islam, where he was voted as the fourth most influential Muslim in the world in an online poll conducted by Ruder Ruder's Faith World in 2009. Um, so please welcome Muhammad Sheikh.
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ As uh, brother said about uh, someone demised, I would like, first like to read oh, two verses from the Quran uh, related to this incident that took place. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa la nabluwannakum bi shayin min al-khawf. Wa al-ju'i wa naqsim min al-amwal. Wa al-anfus wa al-samarad. وبرش الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من رب ورحمة وأولئك من المهتدون فسجنز رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب Thank you. Coming to the topic, actually, uh, I had did, made this booklet uh, in a detailed form that I would like to speak upon, but because of the shortage of time, I have uh, reduced verses. So first of all, there are the attributes of the book. So now if you, the, this is attributes of the book given to Musa, Moses, peace be upon him. And at the same time, the corner, you'll, you'll find attributes of the book of Allah. So now, the book that was given to Musa, peace be upon him, the attributes of those. Surah so Nisa 4, 1, 6, 64, Kallam Allah Musa. Allah spoke to Moses directly. Al Araf 7144, be kalami. And the same we will say with the words of Allah. The same attributes will be with the book of Allah. Then Al Araf 744, 144, be the salati. With the messages of Allah, again with the book of Allah, with the message of Allah. Al Baqa 292, Al Bayinat, clarifications. And the same book of Allah, clarification. And Nisa 4.153, Sultanam Mubina, clear authority, and the Book of Allah is also clear authority. At Taha 2013, Yuha, inspiration, Book of Allah, also inspiration. Then Hud 1196, Bi Ayatina, with our signs, and the Book of Allah with our signs. Ashura 42, Shara, way the road, way the road. Al Qasas bi ayatina bayinat with clear signs both to them. Then further we go uh, in Surah Rafir 4053, Al Huda, the guidance. And same is the attribute of Book of Allah, guidance. And Najam 53, Sohrafi Musa, pages of Moses, pages of Moses. Al Allah 8719. Suhar for Ibrahim of Musa, pages of Ibrahim and Moses, pages of Ibrahim and Moses. Alambia 2148, Riyang Amwadikra, light and remembers. Light and remembers. Al Araf 7145, Al Wah, the tablets, the tablets. Al Baqa 253, Al Furqan, the criterion, the criterion. Al Baqarah 253, Al Kitab, the book, the book. Al Aqa 46, Kitab Musa, Imam Abu Rahma, Book of Moses is a leader in mercy. Book of Moses is a leader of mercy. So, this was I was trying to con convey. Further, the book of Allah is Asan Hadith. Can you find out? Got it? Last page, Surah uh, Az Zumar 920, Ahsan Hadith, most beautiful incident, event, that is Book of Allah. Yusuf 12.3, Ahsan Al Qasas, most beautiful relationship. Ibrahim 14.25, Al Amthal, the examples. Al Ibran, Maurida, the sermon. Al Hijr, Al Dhikr, the remembrance. Arab 7145, Al Wah, the tablets. Al-Anbiya 2148, Diyah, Shine, 
Al Baqarah 299 Bayanat clarifications. So, further, if you go, Al Araf 762, Risalat, Messages, Al Imran 344, Anbiya, the Prophecies, Al Muminun 2368, Al Qawl, the saying, Al Bayana 9862, Sohof, pages, Al Jasiyah 4516, Sharia, way. At Tawbah 948, Al Amrillah, the order of Allah. Yunus 1035, Al Haq, the truth. Al Baqarah 2145, Al Ilm. Now, these, there are many attributes of the Book of Allah which I have not that completely, but in the, the point I'm making is Musa, peace be upon him, has been given roughly. 17 attributes of the book, 17. And generally mankind knows only Torah. Now, I believe every book is different. Like Bible is a different book. Hadith is a different book. Quran is a different book. Avesta, Gita, other, every book is a book, different book. So there are things, similarity drawn in every book. But we cannot, uh, I myself will not mingle the st say statements written in the Bible or in other books and in book of Hadith and relate and make it a mixture. You have to say this is what the Hadith says separate, this is what Bible says separate, and this is what Quran says. So in, in my understanding, the Bible consists of two parts, Old Testament and New Testament. And the first part, book Old Testament, contains the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is referred as Torah of the Jews. So I'm telling you that's a separate book mentioning that these are the five books are referred as Torah. And Matthew, according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, they say that Jesus preached the gospel. In this book, we find this in the Bible. So this is a separate book and educating us what it has. So I'm presenting that as well. So now coming to Quran, the ayahs, Yunus 10 and 37 verse. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ أَنْ يُفْتَرَى مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَتَفْصِيلَ الْكِتَابِ لَا غَيْبَ فِيهِ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ If you note in the Arabic, you'll find the word Qur'an in Arabic and Kitab in Arabic. Now the Qur'an means reading and the Kitab means the written one. So we have to know, we have to understand what the ayah is trying to tell us, that what is Quran and Kitab? Kitab means the book, this is the book, and when I read, it's Quran, that's it. And in the school, we tell, send our children to read, what, books. So <laughs> they're going and reading the books, the books are there, written down. And then we do, we say in studying. They are studying books. So Allah is also trying to say the same thing. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ That this Quran or reading is not, can be produced by other than Allah. وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدِي And you can confirm what is in front of you. بَيْنَ يَدِي It's in front of you. وَالتَّفْصِيلَ الْكِتَابِ And a detail of the book. When you read any book, then only you can the details. So Quran, when you're reading it, the book, reading me, the book means the written one, the, the, in front of you, you get that detail of the book. La rayba fi min rabbil alameen. There is no doubt in it coming from the Lord of the worlds. So this I is emphasizing Quran is the reading of the book, the written one. So the book is the written one. When we read it, we, it is in front of us. We confirm what are we reading. So any mistakes, anybody can correct. But the concept is 
If I have a like this so called the, the the we have written Quran on the book, this book. So we slang in the, my house and I don't read it. So I don't I don't get anything. But once I read it, I get the details of the book. The, any book you read, then you get the details of that book. This is what I was saying. Quran is the reading and the book is the written one and you get the detail of the book when you read it. Surah and I am going to read is Al Hijr 15. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lawla hafizun. Now in Arabic, you will see like this that I, I translated. Normally they don't translate. Surely, verily, as brother also mentioned, something like that. Definitely, we, we, we have revealed the remembrance. Inna, surely we, nahnu, we, nazalla, we reveal. So this is the, the only God Almighty can say these three different, different, uh, same word, definitely three times. And for, by virtue of it, no human being can write sentences like that. If I say this, you know, but uh, any time a man says these words can never be accepted a uh, statement of a man. So we understand when you read the ayahs, so it gives this clear distinction that is not human can say this. Surely we, we, we have revealed the remembrance and we definitely are the preservers of it. Again, definitely. Surely we are the preservers of it. So now we know that the book in the whole world that is memorized is preserved by Allah. And the writing is by Allah also. I mean, we made it on papers, but the writing itself is also from Allah. When he said the book of Allah, so in other words, I'm saying the written of Allah, the writing of Allah. So man copied that writing and brought in the piece of paper. But it's, it is memorized mostly people parts of the world in different nationalities and different languages. They have memorized in Arabic. So, then further it says in Surah Buruj, 85, Baluwa Quran Majid fi lawhi mahfuz. Quran is the reading. And it is a glorious reading. It is preserved in a law or a tablet, preserved. And that tablet is to find where in mankind's brain, the way the memory center is. Maybe with Allah as well, but with us also. That is why we memorize. We memorize the ayahs of the Quran, or the Quran is memorized in the lawhe mahfuz, a tablet preserved. So you can see, whenever you are a child, you memorize few surahs, and then you don't even repeat it, but still it's there. You don't repeat it as well. So if you memorize the Quranic Arabic, and then you, you carry on repeating and repeat, it will be perfectly memorized. Not any other words, no the Bible, no Bhagavad Gita, no, nothing, no one. So now we got the under, understanding that the zikr or the remembrance or the remember, reminder is definitely revealed by Allah and He's preserved it in the tablet. And from that tablet, we are reading it, the Quran, the Arabic reading. So now, Maida. Al-Maida 5. Inna anzalna tawra fiha hudan wa nur yahkumu bi an-nabiyyun al-ladhina islamu lil-ladhina hadu wal-rabbaniyun wal-ahbar bimustu'fizu min kitab Allah wa kanu alayhi shuhada fala taqshabu al-nasa bakshawn wa la tashtaru bi ayati thamanan qalila wa man lam yahkum bi maanza Allah faulaika umul kafirun Again, you'll notice, surely we, we is the first person Allah, royal we, we. We, we have revealed the Torah two times. Inna, surely we, definitely we. Anzalna, we have revealed the Torah, the law, in it is guidance and light. Now, in the Bible is the first five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and people say that is the Torah. Here Allah said that we have revealed the Torah. We have revealed, definitely two times, we, we have revealed the Torah. In it is guidance and light. 
Yaqub yan nabiyun the prophets governed by it alladhina aslamu those who submitted lilladhina hadu for the hadu the, the Jews and the rabbani the, the lords and the ahbar the scholars bi masur fizu min kitabillah they were uh, they were made to memorize the preserve they have to memorize preserve the book of allah and they were the guy they were the witnesses so tawra was supposed to be were, were meant to be memorized by the mankind is it that so people have memorized it and they don't know where is the tawra yes bi mustur fizu min kitabillah the what they were made to memorize preserve from the kitab book of allah bi mustur fizu min kitabillah wa kanu ala shahad and they were the witnesses so now in the the torah allah says we we have revealed the torah the prophets governed the rabbani governed the ahbar governed for the hadu for the jews and they were uh, <laughs> they were made to memorize the book of allah from this book of allah the torah was to be memorized and now it is memorized but still people are looking where the torah is looking into bible the torah word is not mentioned the quran with moses but however it mentions i read the, the word tawra it says yaqub bin nabiyun alladhi so musa was a nabi so tawra was governed by the prophets including musa peace be upon him and all the other prophets and muhammad as the seal of the prophets so tawra was governed by the prophets it is not exclusively mentioned with moses anywhere in the quran 136 times musa alayhi salam name is mentioned Oh, name, not the events. Name, and 18 times is mentioned Tawra. So nowhere Allah says Musa got the Tawra. The biblical words say five books of the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, the Numbers, the Deuteronomy. They say that is the Tawra. But we read in the Quran that Allah revealed the Tawra. Definitely, it is guidance and light. Then He said, "Fala taqshawna sabakshawn." Do not fear them, but fear Me. wala tashru bi ayati thaman qalila and do not purchase my ayat with small price and then for is wa man lam yahkum biman zallah fa ulaika hum alkafir and who people will not govern the contest is the tawra what allah has revealed the other kafir and the rejectors now to musa alayhi salam allah says surah number 7 araf 7 and aya 144 qala ya musa inni istafaytuka ala an-nas bi risalati wa bi kalami fa khudh ma ataytuka wa kun min ash-shakirin he yani this is allah is saying in third person whenever you read the quran in third person it is the messenger rule i mean jibril is communicating the quran is in first person when allah is communicating directly when he speaks in third person second person that is the jibril rule i mean is saying he said oh moses surely i have chosen you over mankind now again allah comes i have i allah i have chosen you over mankind with my risalat with my messages and with my kalam with my words so hold fast to what i gave you and become of those who are thankful so in this i have we are we are we get it that allah chose musa salam peace be upon him uh, by allah and he say, says that i have chosen you with my messages risala and with my words and so hold fast to it what i gave you and become of those who thankful so musa salam got the risala the words from allah and the messages from allah and allah chose him now further allah says to musa salam surah number araf 7 145 wa katabna lahu fi al alwah min kulli shay'in maw'idah wa tafsiran li kulli shay' fa khudha bi quwwatin wa amur qawmaka ya'khudhu bi ahsaniha sa'urikum dar al fasiqin now allah again said we first person we have wrote for him that is moses in alwah the tablet sermon for everything 
explanation for everything. So hold fast to it with strength and order your people, that is the Bani Israel, order your people that they should hold it beautifully. Soon I will show you the circle of the liberals. In this ayah, you come to know that Allah is communicating to Musa, peace be upon him, and he is writing himself. Look, we wrote, and when the thing is written, anywhere it becomes a book. Anything that has been written by any person, Allah, me, human beings, and anything in the computer, what has been written is become. So he said, وَكَتَّبْنَا لَهُ فِي الْأَلْوَاحِ in the tablet, who wrote? Allah wrote. And I said, بَلْ وَقَرْآنٌ وَجِيدٌ فِي لَوْحٍ مَحْفُوزٌ In the law, the tablet, the Allah, in the tablet is written what? Allah wrote. The what? مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْعِدًا Every sermon from, every sermon and a detail of everything. So, what is in the tablet is written this. And he says, فَخُلْحَا بِقُوَّةً Hold fast to it and order your people. وَأْمُرْ قَوْمَكَ يَخُذُوا بِأَحْسَنِهَا That they should hold it beautifully. سَوْرِيكُمْ دَارَ الْفَاسِقِينَ So you must understand that, that whatever is written today in a book form, in a, uh, today we have like this, it was written by Allah in the tablet. And from the tablet, we brought the book on, in, the, in, the, in the world on a piece of paper or a computer. So you cannot <laughs> say that it was the first, the, uh, the egg of, or the hen. What was the first? So we know in the world, we can't say how and when, but the Quran, the book of Allah, existed in all times. The book of Allah, containing all the attributes in one book. So this is written by Allah in the tablet, and from that tablet we read. So it says, we wrote for Musa in the tablet, min kulli shayin mawida, and tafsil li kulli shayin, fa khuduha bi quwwatim wa abur qawmaka ya khudu bi asina sawrikum dar al fasikin. We wrote for him in the alwa, the tablet, sermon for everything, and explanation for everything. So hold fast to it with strength, and order your people, the children of Israel, order people, you know, that, that they should hold it beautifully. Soon I will show you the circles of the liberals. So we come to know that the, the, the book is written, the writing is written by Allah in the tablet, and when we read from the tablet, is the reading is Quran. When we say Quran is the reading from the tablet, in the tablet is written by Allah. So now in Surah Al Isra 17, Ayah 2. وَآتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ هُدًى لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَلَّا تَتَّخِذُوا مِن دُونِي وَكِيلًا Now Allah says, because he is written himself, so he said, we gave Moses the writing, the book, written in Allah. He says, we آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ we gave, we gave Moses the book, the written one. And written where? In the law, in the Allah. Okay? We saw that. And he says, for the وَجَعَلْنَا who? And we made it Hudali Bani Israel, a guidance to the children of Israel. Allah تَتَّفِذُوا مِن دُونِي وَكِيلًا So from here we come to know that the Allah contains the words written by Allah, and Allah says, we gave Moses the book. Now it has become a book. Not on a piece of paper, but in the tablets, written by Allah. So we understand what book was given to Moses. Okay? The book was what book was given to Moses, and with all these 17 attributes I recited in the earlier. And we are reading it, we are finding it here. And every other thing, sermons and the message and the kalam was written in the Allah, the tablet, and the book is given to now to Moses. So we come to know what is the book of Moses. Now we go to Jesus, peace be upon him. Surah Al Imran 3 and Ayah 45. إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ يَا مَرْيَمُ 
ان اللہ یوبش کی بی کلیمتی من اسم المسیح و عیس ابن مریم و جیہن فی الدنیا والآخرہ و من المقربین When the angel said to Mary, surely Allah gives you good news of a word from him. His name will be Al-Masih, Isa, uh, Al-Masih means Christ, uh, translated Christ, uh, uh, Jesus, Isa, Jesus, Al-Masih means Christ, Isa, Jesus, uh, the son of Mary, Maria Mary, held in honor in this world and held in, in the hour after. and from those who the close one. Now this is the narration about Mary, that Allah gave good uh, news to Mary about a word from him, and his name will be Al-Masih, Isa ibn Maryam, Christ Jesus, son of Mary. Now for her, it was not uh, understood for by her that she says, Al Imran 3:47, قَالَتْ رَبِّي أَنَّا يَكُونِ لِي وَلَدْ وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرْ قال كذلك الله يخلو ما يشاء إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقوله كن فيكون. She said, Oh my Lord, how will how he will become a son for me when no man has touched me? He said, Even so, what he creates, what he what Allah creates, what he wills, and when the order is complete, then surely he says for him, Be and he becomes. So this is an unusual birth, a miraculous birth for Jesus, peace be upon him. But he was referred as a word from, from Allah. So you see further, Surah 3, Al Imran 3, Ayat number 48. Now the, this is the good news given to Mary. Still the good news is going on. And he said, وَيُوْ عَلِمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالْتَوْرَاتَ وَالْنْجِيلِ Now this information is given to Maria Mary before the birth. And you see first is the book, the writing one, the written one. Then the third, second is the Al-Hikmah. And the third is the At-Tawrah. And the fourth is Injil, the Gospel. Now the Gospel writers say, Jesus preached the gospel. Everywhere, Jesus preached the gospel four times. Four gospels say Jesus preached. But in the Quran, Allah says he will, give, he will be given the knowledge of the book, the written one, the writing. He knows how to write. Well, Hikmah, the wisdom, is mentioned in the book. What Tawrah, the law, and Injil, the good news. And then further it says in, in Ayah, for it says, وَيُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْرًا وَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Meaning, when he will speak to the people in, in, in from the cradle or in maturity, he will not speak, hello, I islam, hello, he speaks the words of Allah. That when he was already in the womb of Mary. So now, even the scientists are finding out, I'm just giving, I'm not a scientist, that whatever, whatever the child is, but is pregnant, some woman, so if there's a fighting going on between husband and wife, He cries, and something to do, he laughs. So if you he let him hear the words of Allah, so maybe when he is born, he knows he can wrap up or remind it easily. So Allah says in the ayah that he will give, Allah will give Jesus the knowledge of the book, the writing, al-hikmah, the wisdom, what Torah and Injil. Now there's a difference. The gospel writers say one more gospel preached. God preached the gospel to the world. What about the book? We believe we got the book, the writing, the same book, and the wisdom, and the Torah, and the law, and the Jeev. And then when he will be born, he will see to the peace, is a prophecy. He will speak to the people when in the cradle and when he's mature, and he will be from the righteous ones. Now when he's born, Surah Maryam 19, Ayat 30. He says, Qala inni Abdullah. When he's born, he says, Qala inni Abdullah atani al kitab wa jali nabiya. So he says, I am surely the servant of Allah or the slave of Allah. Atani al kitab. 
to me is given Al-Kitab, the book, the written one. Wajali Nabi, and he made me a prophet. So in the Quran, Jesus is the only born prophet because he had the knowledge of four things, the book, the wisdom, the Torah, Injil. And when he was born, he said, I'm Abdullah, I'm, I'm the servant of Allah, slave of Allah. I have been given Al-Kitab, the book, the written one. Wajali Nabi, I made me prophet. So Jesus, peace be upon him, confirming, when he spoke to the people in the, in the, from the cradle, he says, I am the servant of Allah, and I have been given the book, and Allah made me a prophet. So he's a born prophet. prophet. Now, in the Quran, Jesus gave his last sermon. His last sermon, so to say, of his going. So we should look this prophecy, look for this person. So it is mentioned here, Surah number Saf 61, Ayah 6. Wait, Qala Isa ibn Maryam, Ya Bani Israel, Inni Rasulullah Ilaykum. مصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ومبشرا برسول يأتي من بعد اسبوع أحمد فلما جاءهم بالبينات قالوا هذا سحر مبين There is a separate lecture of mine where I've described Umm al-Qura, the mother of the cities and people who live in that area are called Ummi in the Mecca they are the Ummi and Jesus is also Ummi prophet, motherly prophet. He had no father, he's a mother. So I've described this. So what I'm saying, Jabal Rahmat is there. A, a mountain of mercy. So Jesus is referred as a mercy for mankind in the ayahs. So I'm saying his last sermon is this, that I'm the messenger, O children of Israel, I'm the messenger to you, confirming from the Torah, and I'm giving a good news of a messenger coming after me, with the messenger after me, Mimbadis Muhammad. Now this after me is a clear cut proof that he's not coming. But again, they say he will come. He says, after me, look for Ahmad, Muhammad. No. You are saying Jesus will come. The Quran says, after me is the messenger Ahmad. His name will be Ahmad. And when that person came, Falamma Jambil Bayinat, with clarification he came, they say this is the magic. So the confusion why they say this is the magic, because this is addressed to children of Israel. And all the messengers are in the children of Israel. So now the, 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 the historians, I don't know how it went, that Ismail Islam is not mentioned children of Ismail. Israel is a, is a, is a laqab or the title given to Yaqub. So now they say Yaqub is the children of Israel, from the genealogy of children. So they can't expect this ayah is referring to the Bani Israel. So in the ayahs, Bani is addressing the Bani Israel and giving good news to the Bani Israel and he's saying, a message is coming after me to the Bani Israel. His name will be Ahmad. They shift it to Bani Ismail and make a genealogy, which is not in the Quran. All the prophets that I have come to know, the, the Hukumat and Nabuwat and Bani Israel is with Bani Israel. I don't, when I say Bani Israel, I don't mean the Jews. Because when I say Bani Israel, they make Israel and the Jews live in it. So when I say children of Israel, the people say, I'm talking about the Jews. I'm not talking about the Jews. Yahud, Hud, and uh, Hadu is mentioned separately, translated as Jews. For Bani Israel, nobody has started as Jews in the whole translation of the Quran. Bani Israel, where Quran says, Bani Israel, nobody writes Yahudi or Hud. But the Jew word is translated for Hadu, Yahud is translated for Jew, and uh, Hudan is translated for Jew. How can you play with words? <laughs> the Hadu, Hadu, Yaudu, Yaudu, Nasara, the, and they are not all correct translated. But anyway, nowhere in the Quran, Bani Israel, anybody has translated Bani Israel, children of Israel, as Jews. 
But in the mind, when you say you read children of Israel, they put you in their mind, this is Jews we are talking with, Jews we are talking with, Jews we are talking. Why? There are two groups in Bani Israel, one of the good groups and one of the bad groups. They've been blessed. Ya Bani Israel, let's go near Matthew, let the Yanam to one the Fawal to Allah So they are referring to the Bani Israel, not referring to Jews. So he was pro prophesizing to the Bani Israel. And the messenger will come to, to the Bani Israel. So if you believe something else, you say this is magic. So they say, Kalu Hada Why are you saying the people are saying? Because we believe he should come in the other line, not in this line. Bani Israel. That is why people are saying it's a magic. So now this we come to know that Jesus prophesies of a messenger coming out. We have to come into Muhammad now. How will you identify him? Who the 11? 17. Afaman kaan ala bayyanatin, bayyanatin min rabbi, wa yatlu shahidun min, wa min qablihi kitab Musa, imamam wa rahma, ulaika yu'minuna bih, wa man yakfur bihi min al-azab, fannaru maw'iduh, fala taku fi mirratin min, inna huwa al-haq min rabbik, now the ayah says, in the previous ayah we come to know, فَلَمَّا جَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ When that messenger will come with, with clarifications, bayinat means clarification, you can identify. He's talking to about messenger Ahmad. So I read an ayah, أَفَ مَنْ كَانَ لَا بَيِّنَاتٍ Who is on clarification? Who is on clarity from his Lord? A witness recites from it and from before it is a book of Musa, peace be upon him, a leader and a mercy. They believe with it, the whosoever rejects with it from the group so finds the promise, promised place. So you do not be in doubt from it. Surely it is the truth from the Lord, but the majority of mankind do not believe. Now Allah is referring his book of Allah as book of Musa. Because I, I read in the beginning, 30, 17 attributes is the same with Allah. So he says, he comes, who comes on clarity, who is on clarity from, from his Lord, who recites from the book. From the book is reciting a witness. A witness is reciting from the book. And women, and where, which book? Women kablihi kitab Musa, Imam wa Rahman. This is the Imam, means Imam is in front of you, and Rahma mercy. So Allah says, this book of Musa is Imam and Rahma. So now this witness, present day witness clarification who got who's on clarity is reciting from the Lord is reciting from the book and this book is the Imam the leader and the mercy for mankind it is in front of you you can read it and verify it the witness is reciting from the book and this witness is been foretold by Jesus Surah Aqa 46 and Ayah Ten. Say, did you see if it is from the nearness of Allah and you rejected a witness from the children of Israel, witness over his likeness? So he believed and you sought greatness. Surely Allah does not guide the people who are oppressors, who witness over his likeness. Jesus, he said, I am the messenger to you, and I am giving good news of a messenger who will come after me. So this is the likeness. And he witnessed, and when the present messenger says, Allah says, who is on clarification? Because he said, when you come with clarification, so that person is the same on is, 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 is a witness. So both are confirming each other. Present day messenger and that messenger Jesus who prophesied for him. He is the only prophet who prophesies after him a messenger coming. No one else. So it's the same messenger we are talking about. Now when I say Kitab, Musa's Kitab, Imam Rahma, another verse says on Surah 46, Ayah 12. وَمِنْ قَبْلِهِ كِتَابُ مُوسَى إِمَامُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَهَذَا كِتَابُ مُصَدِّقُ لِسَانَ الْعَرَبِيَةِ لِيُنْذِرَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَبُشْرَ الْمُتْمَحْسِنِينَ 
I was reading before, this is the book of Moses, which is Imam Rahmah. So now, he has said from before, this book is an Imam Rahmah. Imam is in front of you and mercy. And further, he confirms the book is confirming the Arabic language. So he's confirming the Arabic language as well. All times, we can say this is a book of Allah, or we can say this is a book of Moses. In all times. So now, Allah says in Surah Anam 6 and verses 154. And we gave Moses Al Kitab the book completely unto the one who did who did good. An expression for everything and a guidance and a mercy that they may believe with it with the meeting of the Lord. We gave Moses the Al Kitab the book completely to the one who did good. That is Present day, Muhammad peace be upon him. An explanation for everything and a guide is the same. Everything was given completely to the present messenger. Now I'll finish. Surah Sajda 32, Ayah 23. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَ الْكِتَابِ فَلَا تَكُمْ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِنْ لِقَاهِ وَجَعَلْنَا هُذَا لِبَرِ إِسْرَائِلِ Definitely we gave Moses Al-Kitab the book. We all know that he was given the book. فَلَا تَكُمْ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِنْ لِقَائِ Then you, so-called, in the bracket if I write Muhammad, it's not written there. فَلَا تَكُمْ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِنْ لِقَائِ Do not be of in doubt of receiving it. وَجَعَلْنَا هُ هُذَا لِبَنِ إِسْرَائِلِ And we made this book a guidance for the Bani Israel, children of Israel. So this book is given to present-day messenger. So now here Surah Yunus 10 and 94, فَإِن كُنْتَ فِي شَكِّ مِمَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكِ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَعُونَ الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَكَ جَاءَكَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ And if you are in doubt, what, so what we have revealed towards thee, then ask those who are reading the book from before you. لَكَ جَاءَكَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ Definitely there has come to you the truth from your Lord. So do not be of the doubters. So this and I just to the person who is getting the book, he's doubting, what about us? We are totally doubting that uh, Torah was given to Moses, that is the Old Testament. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Muhammad Sheikh. I think, again, we just went through a lot of different ayahs, and I think any time we're reminded of the Quran, we just realize there's just so much knowledge and breadth of guidance that we can have. And every time it's recited, it's like, you know, you just kind of feel like there's a different meaning or a more enhanced meaning every time. So where we're at right now is the best part. Um, the audience gets to ask questions. They get to, you know, really take this learning um, a, a little bit deeper. You have two internationally world-renowned scholars sitting in front of you um, and an open floor to ask questions. So just as a reminder, um, we really have this space as a place to have critical discord, to have critical thinking, to be able to um, you know, take into account um, varying views from varying people. So we want to make sure that we're respectful of both scholars um, and the people around us. And so, you know, once you ask your question, I'll have the mic. If you have a question, um, just raise your hand. I'll bring it around to you. You ask your question, and then we can um, listen from each scholar on what they have to say. Um, if you don't want to speak on the mic, you can write down your question, and um, either me or uh, Rubina will come and just grab it from you and we can read your question for you as well. So if you don't want to speak on the mic, just write it down and hold it up and we'll, we'll get it. So I'm going to open the floor to whoever wants to be the first question. Oh, we already got one. Okay. Let me. Ladies first. Oh, you got it. I'm going to bring the mic to you. Okay, you got the mic. You have a question. Right? I'm a confused. And you mentioned that. Uh, Bani Israel aren't the Jews, then who are they? Unless I misunderstood something. So that's my question. 
J just to repeat that, the question is, um, who is Bani Israel if they're not the Jews? And we'll have um, Muhammad Sheikh to answer on that, and then Imam Zaid Shaka would also um, request that you answer the question afterwards as well. You see, we recite in the Surah Fatiha, and we say, Ihdina Surat al Mustaqeen, Surat al Ladina and Amtalikin. We said, guide us on the straight path, straight path and the way of those whom you blessed. Surat al Ladina and Amtalikin. I'm not going for the Anamtalikin. So when I was reading the book, so I, listen, I was looking for the and an, who are the blessed people. So we know for sure the prophets are the blessed. But as a community, who are the blessed? So see, Surah Baqarah 2, Ayah 40. Ya Bani Israel Askuru, Ni'mati Allati An'amtu Alaykum, Wa Ufu Bi'adi, Ufi Bi'adi, Wa Yaya Farabun. So these are the group of people that Allah blessed. He's saying it. So he's reminding the blessing that he has done, and he's asking to fulfill the covenant that I've done to, to you. So then further we read, uh, you, you order people the goodness and you forget yourselves and you read the book. Do you not understand? Then one verse is, And believe what has been revealed to you. Do not be of the first of the rejectors. Amin when believe. Now the ayahs are revealed to you. Believe what has been revealed over you, the Bani Israel, and do not be of the first of the rejectors, because they are the beholders of the book. There is another ayah. The Bani Israel are the inheritors of the book. Bani Israel got the hukum and nabuwat and prophethood. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا بَنِي سَلْ كِتَابُ وَالْحُكُمُ النَّبُوَةِ The Bani Israel, the children of Israel. So they are not Jews. They are the chosen people in all times as not these Jews, I'm telling you. They don't have anything. I'm talking about the Bani Israel who have got the book, who have got the hukum, who have got the nabuwat. And the, our the gentlemen read the Quran. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ والحكم والنبوة. They are those to whom we gave Al Kitab, the book, Al Hukum, the governance, and Al Nubuwa, the prophecy. With 18 prophets, he read. They are all from children of Israel. There is not a single prophet out of Bani Israel in the Quran. They are all in the book, Bani Israel. And they are the chosen people, chosen for. Uh, sharing the message to the world. So what happened the day we we say people of the book are the Jews and Christian, the Bani Israel, the Jews and Christian. What are we? We are all giving that privilege to them. So I'm saying, look, the Quran say, doesn't say that. Uh, do you want me to recite more? Do you understand what I said? Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, most of our scholars understand Bani Israel to be the children of Yaqub, the descendants of Yaqub, just as Bani Adam are the descendants of Adam. And then the Alladin Hadu, those are those who went astray and then they returned back to the guidance that was given to the children of Israel, Bani Israel, by the prophets, alayhim salam And uh, al-Yahud was a specific tribe, one of these tribes from the Jews. So they're all related to the Jews, comprehensively Bani Israel, just so all of us are Bani Adam, Jews, Christians, Muslims. So Bani Israel, uh, most of the scholars the overwhelming amount of the scholars from the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and all the generations say they are the descendants of Yaqub alayhi salam. And Bani Israel are the ones who went astray. Uh, uh, are the ones who 
deviated and came back to guidance. And Al Yahud was a a small group or a sub tribe from that from the children of Israel. So all of them have some connection with the descendants of Yaqub. Wallahu alam wa mustan. And Allah knows best. The origin of Bani Isai that sister was asking, the origin of Bani Isai, just we, we, we forgot to mention, in, is in the uh, Ayah Surah 17 and, and three Ayahs. So, just I'm just reminding that mostly people think about Yaqub, but in the Quran there's the origin of where the origin. The Quran speaks of Bani Adam and Bani Isai too, but that's all. So, Bani Adam is all mankind. But Bani Israel are chosen people who board the ship of Noah. And I say that in Surah 17 and 2 ayat, Wa atayna Musa al-Kitab wa jalna huda li Bani Israel, Allah tatrikhidu min duni wa khila. Zuriyata, Bani Israel, ending Bani Israel is the Zuriyat man hamilna ma'anu. That it, the Bani Israel, the offsprings whom we carried with the Noah's Ark. So the origin of Bani Israel starts the believers with no other Islams, not his wife, not his son, the believers who were uh, asked by Allah to, 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 to go on to that ship, as mentioned to us. So that is from there the offspring from Bani Israel, the offspring from the Noah's Ark. So all the, from the Noah's Ark, the believers came into the world where the boat went and they are the children of Israel. Children of Adam is all mankind, they don't have book. Children of Israel have, are the Bani Israel who have got the book, Hukum and Nabuwat, and they are the Warisin, meaning the inheritors of the book as well, in the mention of the Quran. So origin is the, in the Noah's Ark. On, on that first, on just on this point, uh, if, if the uh, language in the Quran says, for example, Zuriyatan min hamanna ma'anuh, so the descendants of those we carry from Nuh, that doesn't mean that the appellation itself starts there. So, for example, we're, we're, we are described as Millat Abi, Abina Ibrahim. The name Muslim was given to us by Ibrahim. But that doesn't mean the specific revelation of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which specifies us as Muslims started with Ibrahim. So Ibrahim called us Muslims. There is no Quran with Ibrahim. That was revealed to Muhammad much later. There is no uh, Shari'ati Muhammadiya. The Sharia that was uh, derived from the Quran, from the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu those weren't with Ibrahim, but we're still called Muslims. So the, the fact that uh, there's a mention of descent doesn't negate the specificity of a later appellation. So mentioning uh, those who were carried in the ark with Noah doesn't negate the specificity of those who are the descendants of Yaqub being referred to as Bani Israel. And if, if the issue were that clear, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be significant difference in terms of how the Sahaba understood the issue, how the Tabi'in understood the issue, and how the scholars have historically have understood the issue. Either they missed something, all of them, and then 2,000 years later, we stumbled upon the truth somehow. And so I, I would just suggest, I, I would like to see, sir, that opinion, uh, the Sahaba who held that opinion, the Tabi'in who held that opinion, and the ulama who held that opinion. And if, if uh, the majority of them, even a significant number, held that opinion, I would say that's a valid opinion. But if not, I would say that it's, it's conjecture. Uh, otherwise, the, the only logical conclusion is they all missed it, 
and we got it right. And that, that to me, that's a, a dangerous contention. Wallahu alam. The question was uh, the, the, the prophets, he asked me a question, the prophets or the Ashabas, they didn't get the message about the children of Israel. But every Ashaba read the Quran, and Quran is perfectly coming to us directly from them. Any other book cannot be constant like Quran. So it can never be that you take an, a, a, a concept based on, the, on, on, on some other book and say that the, all the Ashaba did not agree to it. But the question is, Duryata man hamalla ma nuh is mentioned in the Quran. So all the scholars were reading this. All the ulama deen or the Ashaba were reading this and doing sujood on this. Duryata man hamalla ma nuh. So this is what I'm trying to convey is we take the other book as the authority and this book as below down. <laughs> so I would request, till if, if you say that who the Asaba, I said the Asaba read this. They did, the people are attributing other books to him that they, they follow this. So this is, a, 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 you must believe that this book never changed. And whatever he's saying the Asaba did not agree like about the children of Israel, is not mentioned in the Quran. So one verse I read again, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَ الْهُدَىٰ In Surah 40, it says, وَأَوْرَثْنَا بَنِي سَعِدَ الْكِتَاب Meaning, we definitely gave Moses the guidance and awrathna and make them the inheritors, Bani Sa'id, Bani Sa'id says the inheritors of the book. Today this book is are the inheritors of are the Bani Sa'id. I am referring in the ayat. The origin also I mentioned, it is from the Noah's Ark. So they are the Bani Sa'id. They originated from the Zuriyat Eman Hamad Lamanu. And then today they are Walakad Ataina Musa al Huda wa awratna bani sa'il kitab that we gave Moses the book a guidance and we made bani sa'il the waris the, 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 the inheritors of the book so how would you justify this? I'm simply asking sir bring me tafsir from this hahab of this verse that say the bani Israel are the descendants of Noah the ayat is saying it the ayah is amenable to interpretation. Which ayah are we talking about? 14. No, which one? Waris or the Zuriyat Aban Hamalamu? Zuriyat Aban Hamalamu. Okay, 17.2. Right, so I'm, I'm simply asking one simple question. Okay, 17.3. Um, you're saying that the ayah is saying, of course the ayah is saying it, but the ayah isn't saying that the Bani Israel are those. It's saying they're the descendants of those we carry with, Moses, uh, with Noah. Yeah. The descendants of those carried with Noah, that appellation begins with one of his descendants named Yaqub. So I'm just asking you to bring, I'm, I'm, I'm asking with an open mind and open heart, bring me tafsir of this verse from any of the Sahaba, any of the Tabi'in, any of the A'imma that say that the, this is stating that the Bani Israel begins with Nuh. No, sorry. I read in verse, it says, Wa ataina Musa al Kitab, we gave Moses the book. No. What do I mean? Wa jalna hudali Bani Israel. This book was given to, to Moses. To Moses. And it is a guidance to the children, children of Israel. For the children of Israel, who are the descendants of Yaqub. No, hold on. Children of Israel. I didn't say descendants of Yaqub. I didn't say it. I said it. No, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> the children of Israel, okay? Yes. And then, Allah Ta'atakhidu min duni wakila. The further I said, what is Bani said? They are the descendants. Duryata man hamallamo. These are the offsprings whom we carried with Noah. With Noah. This is the ISS. So what I'm saying is, you are saying only descendant is Yaqub. No, no, I'm saying that you, Moses, we yeah. gave Moses the scripture to guide the Bani Israel. Total agreement. I agree with you 100%. I, I agree with the literal meaning of the verse, the scripture. What, what do you understand the literal meaning of the verse? What do you understand? I'm saying I agree that Moses was given the Torah to guide the Bani Israel. No, book. 
No Torah. Moses was given the scripture okay. to guide Ben Yisrael. Yes, please. Agree, total agreement. Where I disagree is that Ben Yisrael are the, the Ben Yisrael are the direct descendants of Noah. No, who we, uh, the, the, all those people who are in the ark, they are the descendants of people who are in the ark, they were the believers. Oh, we're all descendants of, of the people in the ark. So you're, no, you're no, not all. But the Adam is separate. Because the, no, no, no. The, 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 the punishment came not to the whole world. The Quran doesn't okay. say that. Well, Only to those people who were rejecting. Okay. So, those so what you're saying is the flood did not cover no, the, the whole world. No, only to those people. And, that, and therefore there were people, descendants of the human family, who weren't on the ark. They are from the, the parts say, of the world that didn't. Bani Adam. So, yes. so the differentiating factor no, here no. is oh, yeah. Bani Israel. I, I think, I think that's, that's a subject that I would say is okay. a minimal okay. to a, a lot of scriptural and historical research to be accepted as a fact. As a night, I can show you that the, the Azab came only to those people who are with Noah's people. They laugh it off and not the whole world. So the, the, in the Bible is the whole world, in the Quran is the only those people who reject it. So believers were in the boat and, and the rest of the people are the mankind. Look, today also the Azab comes in the parts of the world where, where Allah thinks that they are the, to be punished, not the whole world. But when he comes to the whole world, it gives the punishment the whole, generally I'm speaking I, I, Yeah, I, I think that, I think that's, that's a very... Okay, let's leave it. Con no, yeah, no, yeah. No problem. Contentious way of looking at okay. history and scripture. Wallahu a'ala. But I, I just asked open-mindedly, just, I would like to see that tafsir from, from the Sahaba and the early generations. Their, their opinions and their views of Qur'an are available. And if they're not available, I would like to see uh, the reasons that the well-known opinion, I'm saying opinion, that the Bani Israel are the, the descendants of Yaqub. What are the reasons if we don't have tafsir from the companions or tabi'in that supports your interpretation, why should we reject the opinion that we do have from many of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, that the descendants of uh, Yaqub are the Bani Israel. Why, why should we reject that? Based on, based on what our forebears have said. It is based on Bible, basically. Uh, well, I, I, I don't base religion on Yaqub Bible. Yaqub it's, I don't base Islam no, on Bible. No, no, I can read to you. I can refer exactly what it happened. Uh, Old Testament, Genesis 32. When man saw that he was not winning the struggle, he stuck, struck the Jacob on the hip and it was thrown out of the joint. The man said, let me go. Daylight is coming. I won't unless you bless me. Jacob answered, until you bless me, I won't let you go. He's holding fast. So he said, that man said, who's caught, he said, what is your name? The man said, Jacob. He answered, the man said, your name will be no longer Jacob. You have struggled with God. You have struggled with men, you have won, so your name will be Israel. Israel word comes in the Bible here. And from the offsprings here are the children of Israel. That's biblical totally. It's what I read from the Quran is different. So, so this is what I'm trying to say. It is the, all these scholars have written, wherever the children of Israel come, they say, Ala Yaqub, follower of the Yaqub. Yaqub, Yaqub is mentioned. You also mentioned Yaqub, Jacob. So I'm saying this is a biblical concept, not the Quranic concept. Actually, the question that I have says, can you give a reference from the Bible that Jews are the descendants of Yaqub to be called Bani Israel? So that might be a good segue. Oh, you did just answer. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so... um. 
Yeah, so we'll go um, you and then you, and I'll, I'll read this in the meantime as we get the mic rolled on. So this says, um, it's addressed to you, um, Brother Muhammad Sheikh. Um, in your lecture, you said Jesus, son of Maryam, was born prophet, and Ahmad, peace be upon him, was not prophet by birth, but Jesus, peace be upon him, said, after me, one messenger of God will come. His name is Ahmad. Please explain Ahmad was not a prophet of God before coming in the world. Please explain the difference between messenger of, of God and prophet of God. Uh, the question referred to that Jesus was a prophet, born prophet. He never <laughs> referred to a born prophet. He said, I'm a messenger. What he said, I'm a messenger. Oh, children, I, but, uh, he said, O oh, children, I am a messenger to you. Uh, a messenger to you. And I'm confronting from the Torah. He's saying, A message to me, and a message is coming after me. He did not say his birth and everything. He said, Messenger is a. Is a anyone carrying message of anything, of God Almighty, or people, or anything. So he's saying, a messenger will come after me. He did not say, a prophet is coming after me. A messenger is coming after me, whose name will be Ahmad. So what I'm trying to say, the one who questioned me, I'm saying Jesus did not refer as a prophet himself. He was born prophet, of course. But what he precise, what he prophesied was a messenger coming after me. So messengers are who deliver the message. The angels are the messengers in the Quran. Rul, I mean, Jibril is a messenger in the Quran, and human beings are the messenger of the Quran. Prophets are always human beings. They get the title of prophethood. Messengers, Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. So they get the title of the prophethood, and they follow the messenger. Atiullah wa atiul rasul. They, they follow Allah in the messenger. When you follow Allah in his messenger, Maybe Allah gave him the prophethood, that Allah's uh, business. What I'm trying to convey, prophet is always a human being, and it can, a person can attain that status by Allah. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the seed of the prophets. So he did not say a prophet, he said a messenger after me coming. Okay? Yeah. And, uh, Where, uh, he was a born prophet, right? Okay. The answer is answer. We're just we're gonna yeah let's let's answer. yeah let the um let's keep questions and comments and finish but afterwards there'll be time to individually talk to s scholars as well. Did you want? Yeah, I think that uh, this response of uh, messenger angels are called rusul. Uh, human beings are called rusul. And the, the true recipient of a special status with the law is those are the prophets and Nabi. I think that's a dangerous play on words uh, because in, in generally, just uh, before I, I, I neglected a point. So this point that Isa Islam was born a messenger and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't or born a prophet and the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't Isa is articulating they're, they're both prophets and messengers with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, with his, uh, his knowledge but his qudra, his, de his decree hasn't ordained that that's manifested in chronological time. So Isa alayhi salam is merely expressing what's with Allah. But that doesn't mean that it has manifested chronologically. So I'll give you an example. Umar radiallahu an was beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was one of the greatest enemies of Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu he prayed, Allahumma azzal islam bi ahab al-rajulain wa ahab al-umarain ilayk. Oh Allah, strengthen Islam with which of these two men are most beloved to you? And some virgin, Amrain, uh, Amr bin Hisham Abu Jahl, Umar bin al-Khattab, Umar bin al-Khattab. 
So that means when he made that dua and Omar was an enemy of Allah, he was beloved with Allah. But that love and his status as al Faruq hadn't manifested itself chronologically uh, with us in our world. And the saying, Isa alayhi salam, referring to himself as a prophet as opposed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is a reference to what is existing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his knowledge and his decree his ordainment that hasn't manifested it itself chronologically. When, when the, uh, Allah mentioned in the Quran, kama sabra ulul azmi min rusul Patiently endure as those great messengers patiently endured. And so who are those great messengers? They're not, uh, it's not a reference to the angels who are rusul. It's not a messenger to us who can be referred to as Rasul. It's an arsaltuka ila fulan bi risala. That doesn't mean that I sent you to so and so with a message. So these, this language has a general application and a specific application. I think what's happening here is the general is being mixed with the specific to support certain foregone conclusions. Which, which reinforce the theory that's being advanced. And again, that's a very dangerous way, way to approach the religion. I've, and my simple question is, we should have someone who has uh, mentioned this previously. Otherwise, it, it becomes a, a case of al-isnad min ad din authenticated chains of narration are an integral part of the religion. And if it weren't for these authenticated chains of narration, anyone could have said anything and attributed it to Islam. So I'm just saying, what is the isnad for, for these opinions? Who uh, in, in previously has done the, these plays on language? Or is it something, again, that's unprecedented? And if it's something unprecedented, and it's something that has no authenticated chains of narration to uh, bona fide scholars, to the Sahaba, the companions who have carried the religion to us, then what prevents someone else from doing the exact same thing, as has happened? So what prevents us from giving uh, legitimacy to Rashad Khalifa's number 19 theory, which was totally uh, rejected and dismantled by Dr. Bilal Phillips. But what gives us uh, from, from a, a principle foundation from uh, the ability to reject that totally novel theory? So that's all I'm saying. If, if these are valid interpretations and positions in the religion, then they should have a precedent. If they're unprecedented, then, and they go against scholarly opinion on many of these issues, then we're in very dangerous territory. That's all I'm saying. S thank you. So next question. Thank you. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have a question for brother, for brother Muhammad Sheikh. Um, if there is the only book uh, or teaching of all prophets, then my question is, if the present day Bible is not the teaching of Jesus, then what is the status of that, the book Bible? Okay. So again, um, the questions are to both scholars, and we decided before that we were going to alternate who starts first. So Imam Jid Shakur, I'm going to let you answer that first I on your mic. I, I think the person who brought up the specific subject should answer first. OK, so we're not going to do that. OK, go ahead. Yeah, I understand. You see, uh, um, you know, there's one verse in Surah Baqarah 2, 79 verse. And it describes in that ayah about the status. Those who 
So they go to those who write the book with their own hands and they say this is from Allah. So now Allah is describing that our people in the world who are writing a book in the name of Allah, in the name of God. So they say that, that these people, the Bible writers are said it's an inspired book. The Gospels are inspired by this. So if you compare, you know, if you really compare the, the book of Allah that I, wrote, I read, read from here, and if you read the Bible, or if you, even if you read the Hadith, you can understand, it clearly make the difference that this is not from Allah. Because if I write a book or if you write a book, they can never be the same, though they are writing the same story. So I mean there's a huge difference between us. Because it says Allah says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبِ مِمَّا نَزَلَّا رَعَبْدِنَا فَاتُو بِسُورَةِ مِنْسْلِ If you are in doubt or what we have revealed, come with a surah. So if the whole Bible is, have contained the words of, there are good writings, I do not deny that. Similar writing, but they can never be attributed with God. No hadith should be attributed with God. Only Quran, the book of Allah, is to be attributed to God. That's my belief. And those who are writing the book with, with their own hands, and they say this is from Allah. The Bible is has got many uh, contradictions and many Bibles are there. I don't want to go into detail. I'm not a good student of Bible. Uh, well, what was the original question? <laughs> the book of Jesus. Uh, Jesus? What about Jesus? Oh, I forgot. The, the original was saying that in the Bible is not the... Yeah. Can you repeat? Oh, that's true. I'm in agreement with Dr. Sheikh. I think the, the Ummah is in, in that what we read today of the Bible, Old or New Testament, is not the revelation that was given to, to Musa in the case of the Old Testament, or even the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, and what we read of the Gospel, even if we contain it to the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and don't take into uh, account the, the other books of the New Testament, I think we're, we're in agreement, the Ummah of Muhammad is in agreement that uh, much of that, the original revelation was lost. What is related has been tampered with or altered, has been uh, interspersed with opinions. And so th I think th we're all in agreement that what we read today as the Bible is not what re was revealed to either Musa alayhi salam or to uh, Isa alayhi salam or any other of uh, prophets and messengers who might be mentioned therein. And the Qur'an, therefore, is, is the criterion for distinguishing what remains of truth and what has been uh, altered. So the Qur'an is the Furqan, the criterion for distinguishing the truth and those earlier sc scriptures. Okay, um, if you have other questions, um, we'll go around and get, uh, let's try to get everyone to be able to ask questions first, and then if you guys have double questions, triple, hopefully we can get to you as well. So, right there. Oh, you have it, okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Did uh, Moses and uh, Muhammad and Isa get the same sharia? No, they got tawheed. They got monotheism. We mentioned yeah. We gave to, uh, we've uh, sent to every nation a messenger instructing them to worship Allah and obey the false God. But the details of actual worship vary from one prophet to the next until we had the final uh, dispensation of of uh, prophetic guidance with our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And again, a lot of the extreme difficulty that was found uh, amongst the Jews and their law was relieved and allevi alleviated and mitigated by the Prophet, by uh, the Shari Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you define Sharia for those who don't know? Sharia is the general uh, general prophetic guidance in the case of Muhammad Sallallahu the general guidance that was uh, based on the revelation and based on yeah. what was given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
to guide us. The specifics of that are found in the, in the fiqh. So the general guidance that was given, the way of the Prophet ﷺ in, in general mm -hmm. is sharia. <laughs> and the details vary from prophet to prophet. So a lot of the dietary restrictions that the Jews have are very difficult. Don't mix this particular uh, food with this one. Don't mix that one with that one. Those are generally uh, uh, abrogated by the law of Muhammad. So that was given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So bottom line, uh, yes, they do differ from Prophet to Prophet. But Tawheed is the same. Yeah. Uh, in Surah Shura 42, verse 13, Shara lakum min ad-din ma wassa bi Nuhum wa alladhi awhayna ilayka wa ma wassayna bihi Ibrahim wa Musa wa Isa an aqimu ad-din wa la tatafarraqu fih kabur al-mushrikin ma tad'u ilayhi Allah yastabi ilayhi man yasha wa yahdi ilayhi man yurib Sharia or Shara road for you from the judgment is what we gave testament with it to Noah al-Islam and we inspired to you so-called Muhammad and the Shara Lord what was testament we gave to Isa, uh, to Ibrahim al-Islam, Abraham and to Moses and to Isa and Jesus and to establish the judgment. If you do not difference in it, it appears big over those who associate to watch you invite them towards it. Allah chooses to towards it whom he wills and he guides. So in this verse the Sharia is given to the same to Noah, to Ibrahim, to Moses, to Jesus, and to Muhammad. Next question in the back. And then. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you both, both of the Imam. Uh, thank you so much. And this is one of a kind debate I'm attending in my 30 years here. Um, I have been listening to Imam Zaid Chaki for the last 20 some years. So my question is only to Sheikh Muhammad. You can rest. So uh, I am just, just like a common person like me. Uh, this discussion is a little bit too complicated. So I read the Quran too, like, you know, born Muslim, born and raised Muslim. So uh, Sheikh Muhammad, the only thing is that, okay, uh, I this, I that, the message you give, how will I implement in my regular life? So what is the real message? Okay, uh, like beside the argument. So like for me, like, you know, according to you, how can I live my regular life? So what is, how can we implement in our life? So just to briefly, like, what is the message? Thank you for asking this question. Uh, First of all, the message is to believe in God Almighty. And once you believe in God Almighty, the la ila means there is no one to accept. I believe that when I say la ilaha, even the sahabas, whoever you say, I say la ilaha, I don't believe it. Illallah, only you believe when you, you believe Allah and his ayats. That should be the Furqan, the criterion. So if you give me a big name, it doesn't affect me. I believe la ilaha. So the first message that you have to say, La ilaha means there is no one to be accepted except Allah. And then Muhammad Rasulullah is the medium to, to give the message. The medium, Muhammad Rasulullah is the medium in the, in the Quran. He's giving the message. They say, Yas aluna kanil mahis. They ask you about menstruation. So the message is there. What to do in the menstruation? Detached with the woman. So if you are a woman, then married life. So I deliver a talk, husband, wife, relationship. Parent, children, relationship. The message there. I'm giving different topics from the Quran to take guidance. So one of the message is not only, first you have to believe in God Almighty, I told you, then Muhammad Rasulullah, and then you know your enemy is Shaitan, Iblis. These are the three, three personality you must know. Because we think that Shaitan may be a good cursed guy because of all this turban and everything. But basically, you, I've delivered a talk on the shaitan, I've given a talk on God Almighty, I've talked on Muhammad Rasulullah and other prophets. But now coming to human lifetime, what we have to do, you know these enemies, who's the enemy? 
Now you take guidance is your family life. Father, son relationship, I have given a talk on, on the IS, based on IS. Then husband wife relationship based on the IS. Then uh, if someone does Faiksha again in the IS. So then I, I, I think there are five, but I'm talking about a family, family life. Hijab. Now there's a big dispute going on hijab. Now if you read the Quran in the hijab, the hijab is mentioned with Maryam and with God Almighty and with men. The hijab word occurred in the Quran with Allah, with Mary and with men. There is no word hijab with women. But what the Christians are doing hijab from the biblical point of view, all the Muslims are doing it. Label Muslims. The amazing thing is that we are, and I tell you, there are many things that Christians, Muslims does it, which the, there are uh, commandments in the Bible. Daswa, chaliswa, you know, ten, when somebody dies, you have to cut a black goat for, you know, sins. So I can tell you many things, it's in the Bible. So mo mostly Muslims do not know. They read the Quran in Arabic. What they are practicing is biblical. So if you know the book, if you want to know what basic thing, I'm telling you, family life is first. You and your family is first. So I've delivered talk. Then you have to know what book is. So I've de delivered uh, a talk. Know yourself. You know, book of Allah is the book, Quran, book of Allah, uh, Torah, Gospel, Psalms, Hadith, Sunnah, Wisdom, God, Holy Ghost, the language, the guy. Is, is the attributes of the I'm giving different, different talks on these things. Then there is uh, know yourself. Are you a Muslim in the nearness of Allah? Allah defines who is a Muslim in the nearness of Allah in the Quran. Who are the people of the book? Who are children of Israel? Who are the protectors, the Aliya, the protectors? Who are the Khalifa? Who are the Imam? How we become sex? Jews and Christians. These are different topics. You identify by the subject matter because Quran talks different subjects mixed together. So you have to first, uh, I have done what is separated them, and then I have read it, so I came to know about the Jews, the Quranic Jews, not the, these label Jews, the Christian Jews, the Christianity, Nasara, they meant Nasara. Nasara means helpers. They don't mean we believe in Christ and the Father, and Son, and Ghost, but we have labeled them as Christians. So, so what I'm trying to say, the basic thing is, all the topics I, if I read, if you read this, I can, you can take this with you. And you see there are many topics discussed, at least 60 topics on different subjects. But all these subjects are based on Quranic ayat and a booklet is given to you. You read the lectures and then you will note those verses and you get the spirit. Otherwise people are reading the Quran, reading the Quran, they are all mixed up and you don't get it. I mean mostly the people cannot because Quran keep on changing the subject continuously. Adam al uh, mentioned, then Moses comes, then marriage comes. <laughs> and, and then something, you know. So I have made separate subjects. You can watch them and inshallah you can get there. Okay, thank you. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do sisters and brothers and then Imam. Yeah. Sure. The uh, Quran explains itself. So the, the first source of explanation principle of tafsir al Quran bil Quran. We see what else is in the Quran on a specific subject. And then we go from Quran being explained by the Sunnah. And then Quran being explained by what the companions and Tabiin have handed down to us. And then Quran being explained by its clear linguistic meanings. So the issue of hijab, hijab is one subject. Uh, but hijab is explained by another verse, which is the verse of the khimar. So Allah says in the Quran, وَلِيَضْرِبْنَا بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ So the, the khimar is what the uh, sister here has on. The Arabs used to wear a head covering the women with the telling behind their backs. The Qur'an, not the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says, وَلِيَضْرِبْنَا بِقْمُورِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ 
So let the women take what the cloth hanging behind them and use it to cover their breast. That's literally what the Quran says. And so to uh, deny, possibly that's not what uh, Dr. Sheikh is doing. <laughs> No, I didn't deny this first. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say the, no, I believe this and the uh, Jalabi but, I also um, believe. But I think what so, your yeah, answer Nabi. could be interpreted or misinterpreted to no, imply. No, no, I believe this, and I, I believe this, that they should okay. cover this. I believe this Jalabi Bihidna also. Yeah, uh, okay. But my only... Yadwajika, Vanatika, Yudina, I believe there's those two. I said the word hijab is not mentioned. That was everything. Yeah, well, see, and this, this is where... I think it, concepts are more important than labels. There, there was an incident where in the early years of Islam, when Islam was spreading, there was a Christian tribe called Bani Taghlib. And Bani Taghlib were a Christian tribe. And when they were asked to pay the jizya, they said, no, we want to pay zakat, like the Muslims. We considered belittling for us to have a special name. So Omar said, you know, call it whatever you want. Just pay it. So he said, it's, it's folly to get hung up on words when the concept is the same. And so I think if, if we are constantly wrangling over specific words on the one hand, we can miss the whole concept. And if on the other hand, uh, we're, we're uh, taking ideas in isolation and not integrating them into the fuller Quranic context, then we can, we can arrive at some very erroneous conclusions. So it, everything has to be integrated together. Okay, um, we'll take a question from the brothers. I think um, there's a mic back there. Yeah, and then um, we're gonna get the scholars to limit to two to three minutes. We can get some more questions. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to say thank you to both speakers. Um, Imam Zaid, your speech resonated with me as an American. Uh, as far as the problems we face and how we can use the Islamic concepts to solve the problems. While Brother Muhammad Sheikh, you talk more about fundamental stuff but it's, it's very different from what's accepted, you know? So my question to both of you is, what is your suggestion to not cause a division so we can continue to focus on the practical issues? Uh, I, I, can I answer first? Yes, yes. Please, yes. And then I have to leave. My, my day started this morning at about four in the morning, and I had to fly here from Houston, Texas. I need, and I have to teach a class at 9 p.m. on Zoom, so I have to rest up before that class. So I'm, I'm going to say this in conclusion to my, my brother's question. I think what, what we have to do is to avoid confusion, to avoid falling into a lot of the uh, uh, things that have caused uh, a severe loss of religiosity, for example, amongst the Jews with Reformed <laughs> Judaism. We, we have, as Muslims, uh, we, we, we have a methodology, and we have a tradition that's been handed down to us. Uh, I, the Quran, a lot of people, for example, will say, uh, I reject I reject hadith, for example. If someone says that uncritically, implicitly, they're rejecting the Quran. Why do I say that? Because there, there's a, a branch of hadith called uh, hadith mutawatir. That's hadith that have been handed up to us, not by individual chains of narration, hadith ahad, but groups upon groups at every single stage of transmission. It's called hadith mutawatir. The Qur'an has been handed down to us by Tawatur. The same way Hadith Mutawatir. So if someone essentially says, I reject all Hadith, and don't, doesn't distinguish between Hadith Mutawatir, 
then they're essentially saying, I reject the Qur'an. Because how did the Qur'an get to us? Us right here in 2022. It didn't drop from heaven. It was handed down to us the same way Hadith Mutawatir, by human beings, but in groups upon groups, at every level of its transmission. So it, it boggles the mind to imagine that everyone conspired to fabricate what they're live, narrating. And so I say that to say this, the, the foundation of our religion, including the Qur'an, including the fundamental teachings of the religion, have been handed down to us by Tawatur. If we accept that and build our, our, our affair on that, then there is no, there's no foundation for confusion, there's no foundation for division, and, and there is no, there's no platform for someone in the 20th century to come up with novel interpretations that have not been handed down to us by Tawatur. And that doesn't say every novel thing might, uh, might be something dangerous or spurious, but when we get into uh, uncharted territory that we can't establish has been handed down to us by unbroken chains of groups upon groups, it becomes hard to distinguish what might be valid and what might be uh, not be valid. What interpretations are acceptable and unacceptable? What is uh, something to just dismiss lightly and something to go to, to war over? And that, that's a formula for disaster and where it will lead us I think is where it will lead, uh, where it has led the Jews and many Christian denominations. And that's with a reformed religion that doesn't have a backbone that will be able to, to stand up against the challenges of time. And, and when, when the time challenges, the origin will be lost in the confusion. Well, I'll give this whole piece and taste you. I'll be excused. No, I, I, do you, would you, you mind? Me also. No, you can. Um, just one yeah. minute. You see, I just want to clarify what brother is saying is, if that is so common and straightforward, why there are many contradictions and, and contradictions that are different schools of thoughts originated from them? There's not one concept, what he's trying to say. There's no one, except the Quran is one concept. The other things are contradictory. Mm -hmm. you, you go read I any... Say that. No. You said it is Mutawatir and... I said, I said the Qur'an and Hadith Mutawatir both come to us by the same method. Okay, but the Qur'an, I read in the ayat, it was, it was, it was, uh, Torah was memorized by the Book of God in the, in the law Mahfuz. It is not the same thing. You know, no but Hadith no, is memorized. No, 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 just a minute, the Qur'an is memorized. You can see there's a difference, hell of a big difference. The Qur'an is memorized by different nations of the world. I, I did deliver this talk. Hadith is not memorized, and there are contradictory hadiths, and there are many contradictory people. No one come to one conclusion. If I am taken out as a separate band, but why the other people, the Shia school of thought, the other school of thought, four six books of hadiths of Shias and six books of Sunni, and the Ibn Kathir and other guys are all contradict, just not one single concept coming down. They all contradict contradictions. No, not the fundamentals. They uh, all, wh which one says we have six <coughs> prayers? Which one said we fast, our obligatory fast is Shaban and not Ramadan? No, if, if I'm, there, there are differences, but the essentials of the religion is miraculously preserved. And, and when you say Quran, all right, which, which reading of Qur'an came from the law mahfuf? Mean? Uh, meaning, was it uh, Ibn Kathir? Was it Hafs on Asim? Was it Warsh on Nafi? All of these uh, uh, readings of Qur'an have been handed down by Tawatur. They've been memorized. Hadith Mutawatur has been memorized. I'm, I've, I've met human beings who memorized the fundamental hadith corpus. Few people. So, 
Yeah, but but the, the point is, after they've been recorded in the books, they didn't have to be memorized. But Quran is still memorized. No, but that's that's not the point. The point is, after the hadith were recorded, including hadith mutawatir, at that point, they didn't have to be memorized. The book has to be protected. And no one's saying that the version of Bukhari that we have now is different from what Imam Bukhari compiled. No one says that. Why, so, why do we use the same? Th the, this is my point. You say all these different Shia and this and that, all, it's a miracle that all of those differences, we come out with five prayers. All of those differences, we come out with an obligatory fast in Ramadan. All of those differences, we come out with wine, pork, swine, etc., a haram. So what I'm saying, the foundation of our religion, despite these differences, has reached us, has come to us. And that the only thing that will erode that foundation are spurious, un un unpredic unprecedented opinions that have not reached us from our earlier generations. That's all I'm saying. And if, if we begin to give priority to those new uh, novel innovations as opposed to what has been come down to us as the foundations of our religion and the foundations of scriptural interpretation, we're going to end up just like the Jews. We're going to have a reformed religion that doesn't have the fiber, the spiritual strength behind it from generations of pious people pushing it forth through time. It's going to fizzle out. And it's going to die, and it's going to fade away. It's already faded in the world, no, man. Muslim no, it, world. It, it, it you don't find faded. good believers in the world. Uh, well, Maximum, you'll find you, all confusion. You don't find good believers in no, no, the world. I've met few people. I'm so I've, done, I've met majority. I'm talking majority. I'm talking. I met multitudes and multitudes. Afghanistan and Muslim multitudes. country, Pakistan Muslim country, all the Muslim country. You look at their behavior. They're reciting the Arabic Quran, well, or nothing of well, the Quran. Well, well Muslim, talking, Muslim countries haven't they, they dropped. All Muslim, Muslim, Muslim countries haven't dropped a, Muslim, a nuclear bomb on any, no, anybody. No, Muslim it. countries still have an idea of family. So I understand. Muslim, Muslim countries, and it's the corruption and pollution of the West that's undermining and creating these greedy, materialistic Muslims. So what I'm saying is, Muslim. what I'm saying is. Su'avan bin Muslimin having a bad opinion of the Muslims leads to a, a, a blanket dismissal of everything, including their tradition, and opens the door for some novel, uh, spurious way of looking at the religion that's somehow going to save us. We're going to be saved by that which saved our ancestors. No, no, you, you can only be saved by your works. You don't have to be saved by how people behave. Anyway, Stop war. <laughs> so, Imam Zaj, by America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who takes so many pictures with him? I was going to ask a question. Yes. I was going to ask a question. Can you make a small suggestion that two speakers should be in the middle? Yes. Can you give your camera to Come, 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 come. They're making it. He's going to let us. Okay. He has so much work to do. He's very much knowledge man. There's a prayer place inside. Thank you. Somewhere. I have to take the mask off a little bit. You can remain for five minutes, two minutes. Good for a guy. I want to see your face. Yeah. Yeah, you look nice. One second. This like a... Hey, Mom, uh, I'll give you another one. You want. Can you stay with us in the picture? Stop talking. Stay <laughs> <laughs> with us in the picture. I have to sell the Muslim on my shoulder. So what? So what? So what? Okay, let us know. Jazakallah. Okay? Thank you very much. Jazakallah. Okay, okay. I don't know 
Yeah. Jeez. 